Okay, so in this video, we want to review L'Hopital's rule. So let's remind ourselves of what is the statement, and as we'll see, it's fairly straightforward. Suppose we have a limit as x approaches a, and a could be any real number or even positive or negative infinity, and we have a quotient of two functions, f of x over g of x. So we're asking quite simply what happens to the quotient f of x over g of x as x approaches a. And we need to have one of two special cases. Either we get a 0 over 0 case, or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity case. The sign is irrelevant for both the numerator and the denominator. So if we have a limit that yields a 0 over 0 case or infinity over infinity case, regardless of the sign, L'Hopital's rule says that we can consider the new limit, x still approaching a, but now we replace both the numerator and denominator by their respective derivatives. So f is replaced by f prime, and g is replaced by g prime. And be careful. We do not differentiate the quotient using the quotient rule. We simply replace the numerator and denominator by their corresponding derivatives. And if this limit exists, what L'Hopital's rule says is that this new limit is equal to the original limit. And that's it. Now, one thing that is nice and we'll see in our last example in this video is if the new limit returns a 0 over 0 case or infinity over infinity case, you can apply L'Hopital's rule once again. So let's consider a few examples of this. So example number one. So let x approach negative 2 and ask what happens to the expression 3x squared plus x minus 10 over x to the 5 plus 32. As always, when we consider a limit, we look at what kind of case we're dealing with. So as x approaches negative 2, if we square, we get 4 times 3 is 12, plus negative 2 is 10, minus 10 is 0, over negative 2 to the 5 is negative 32, plus 32 is 0. So we have a 0 over 0 case. And here, we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, just in passing, since both polynomials are 0 at negative 2, we know that x minus negative 2 being x plus 2 is a factor of both polynomials. So you could, using long division, divide both polynomials by x plus 2, and you would arrive at the same answer. But in this video, we are going to use L'Hopital's rule. And every time you use L'Hopital's rule on above your equal sign, write LH to specify explicitly that you're going from this limit to the new limit using L'Hopital's rule. So x is still approaching negative 2, and now we differentiate both our numerator and denominator. The derivative here will be 6x plus 1 over 5x to the 4 plus 0, 5x to the 4. And now we look at our case again. As x goes to negative 2, this goes to negative 12 plus 1, negative 11, over negative 2 to the 4 is 16, 5 times 16 is 80. And now what we're saying is as x approaches negative 2, our fraction is getting closer and closer to negative 11 over 80, so there's nothing wrong here, and that is our final answer. first example of L'Hopital's rule. Let's consider now an example where a is positive infinity. And we'll consider quite simply the ratio of ln of x over root of x. Again, we look at our case. We know that x, as x goes to infinity, both ln of x and root of x go to infinity, so we have here an infinity over infinity case. 
and so we can apply little PTAS rule. The derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. If you write root of x as x of the 1 half and use the power of rule, you'll find the derivative of 1 over 2 root of x. Before we consider our case here, let us simplify. If you divide by 1 over 2 root of x, you multiply by the reciprocal. So you have 1 over x on the numerator times the reciprocal of 1 over 2 root of x, which is of course 2 root of x over 1. We can simplify some more as root of x over x is 1 over root of x, and we're left with 2 over root of x. And then we have a trivial limit. As x goes to infinity, root of x goes to infinity, and so our case is 2 over infinity. But as we divide 2, which is constant, by something which is getting larger and larger and larger, the fraction, of course, shrinks to 0. And so the answer is 0. Let us consider one last example of L'Hopital's rule. Third and final example of this video. Letting now x approach 0, cos of x minus 1 over sine of x squared. As always, we consider a case. As x goes to 0, cos of 0 approaches 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. As x goes to 0, so does x squared, and sine of 0 is 0. So we have 0 over 0 case. We can apply L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of cosine is negative sine minus the derivative of 1, which is 0, over, and here we'll have to apply the chain rule, the derivative of sine is cosine, times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Now one thing we'll do here is, before we consider our case, we'll do two things. We have a negative 1 half as a multiple of our limit, so we can factor it up front, and then we're left with sine of x over x times cosine of x squared. We can go one step further because negative one half is a constant multiple. We can pull this out of our limit and have negative one half, the limit, as x approaches zero of sine of x over x times cosine of x squared. And now we can ask, what is the case in this new limit? As x goes to 0, sine of 0 is 0 over, now cos of 0 is 1, but times 0 is again 0. So you see the new limit in this case is still giving us an indeterminate case, but we can once again apply L'Hopital's rule and hope that the new limit will give us no longer an indeterminate case. So negative one half follows along, and we apply L'Hopital's rule on this limit. Derivative of sine is cosine over, and now we must use the product rule. Derivative of x is one times cos of x squared plus x times the derivative of cos of x squared. Derivative of cos is negative sine of x squared times chain rule the derivative of x squared which is 2x. Now this may look bad but it's actually quite simple. If we look at our case with this limit cos of 0 is 1 cos of 0 is 1 plus, and as x goes to 0, 
0 times 0 times 0, this term vanishes. So we have a very simple case, 1 over 1 plus 0, 1 over 1. So this limit converges to 1, or I should say is equal to 1. And so we're left with negative 1 half times 1, which is of course negative 1 half. And that's it. So here we had to apply L'Hopital's rule twice. And there are cases where you have to apply L'Hopital's rule three times, four times, and so on. Now we considered in this video three very straightforward examples of L'Hopital's rule. In our next videos, we will consider special cases.